I'm Mason Marangella, the Rig Doctor, and today I'm gonna give you five easy tips for beginners to upgrade your pedal board for better tone and lower noise, and make sure you stay all the way to the end so you get all five of these easy hacks and all the links to go along with them. So maybe you're a beginner and you're dealing with your first rig and you want to do some upgrades or maybe you've been playing for years and years and you haven't been paying attention to your pedal board the way that you should. Today, by the end of this video, you'll have some really easy, inexpensive upgrades that you can do to your pedal board that are going to be something that you can implement in a few hours and certainly less than a day just doing a little reworking of your current pedal board as it is using these products. And be sure to check out all the links in the description. Everything that we talk about today will be available from all the major retailers, Sweetwater and Amazon, places like that. So do be sure to check those out as we go through each one of these products. Number one thing that I recommend for any beginner or intermediate person, or really frankly anybody that wants to get the best possible tone out of their pedal board, they need to have a high quality isolated power supply. And there's two power supplies that I'm thinking of that meet the criteria of being really great and really inexpensive for what they are. If you're using a you know sort of wall wart style daisy chain and you wanna to go to something that's really gonna give you a high quality tone and sound and not have any noise whatsoever, I firstly recommend that you check out the True Tone One Spot CS series, in particular the CS6 and the CS12. Both of these are known as switch mode power supplies, which means that they are gonna be lower noise and more efficient than the linear power supplies of old. Not only that, but they're gonna be able to be usable in any country of your choosing. So whether you're here in the US, you're in Europe, you're in Asia, it's gonna work with any wall voltage, no matter which wall voltage it is, it automatically recalibrates for you and allows you to use that. The other thing that's really great about it is you can stash it underneath your pedal board if you have a pedal train or a temple audio or one of the pedal board styles that allows you to put a power supply underneath without any consequence for noise. With some of those old linear power supplies, you put those underneath some pedals and it's gonna cause a whole mess of noise because you're gonna be having that toroid transformer in the magnetic field bleeding into the pedal itself. And that's just gonna get amplified through the pedals and through the amplifier. So you wanna make sure that you're using a switch mode power supply if you are in fact gonna be using pedal boards like that where you stash the power underneath. Another one that I really like that's even smaller and also very affordable is the MXR ISO brick. And they also have a miniature version of the ISO brick. And these again offer to you variable voltages all the way from nine to 18 volts, several high current outputs. This just means that you're gonna be able to power anything that you want off this. And equally, it can plug in anywhere in the world. It's gonna automatically recalibrate and make sure that you get the voltage that you need for your pedals without any compromise, low noise, ultra compact. I don't think you can ask for anything more, so be sure to check out those power supplies. Recommendation number two that I have is using high quality soldered cables. Now it used to be in the old days if you wanted a soldered cable that was high quality, you had to spend bucket loads of money in order to get there. But now there's a lot of options that are actually offering low profile pedal board specific patch cables that are small, compact, easy to maneuver between tight spaces, and I'm gonna to talk to you about a few of them today. Now, one of the first ones that I love is made by EBS. Now, this is a company based over in Europe, and they made some really high quality small patch cables that allow you to maneuver between all the different devices, and they're actually in a ribbon shape. These are very inexpensive for what they are, and even though they don't look like it, they are in fact soldered. I've taken one apart, I've investigated it, and it is a soldered cable, so rest assured if you get one of these, it is using a high quality connection at both ends of the cable. Another alternative to this is the Ernie Ball ribbon cables, and they similarly use a system that looks like EBS, and it's got Ernie Ball spin on it, but equally very easy to maneuver, low profile ribbon cable. Now, if you like the traditional cables like the Rig Doctor, there are some other brands that make some stuff that might work for you. Companies like MXR make one that's a very standard looking type cable. It uses a Switchcraft style end on it. This might be something that you consider if you want to have something that looks more familiar to the cables that you're used to, but is also high quality. And then if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can visit our Reverb store and we offer a high quality Mogami 2314 using uber low profile square plug ends, which are the best 
possible ends you can get, in my opinion, in the industry. And those are also offered very reasonably. And we offer also a lot of sizes that a lot of these other companies don't offer. We offer everywhere from four inches all the way up to 36 inches. And we go in between three, four and six inch increments through all those sizes with straight or right angle plugs. So you can presumably get any type of cable that you need, any size, any type of angle for the cable and being able to get that to finish your pedal board. Now, why would you even wanna upgrade to one of these cables if you got you know, kind of an off brand or something that maybe just came with a pedal board setup that you already had? The main reason why is you wanna lower your capacitance. The lower capacitance of the cable on the pedal board, the least susceptible your tone is gonna be for other things in the environment. It's gonna help reduce noise. It's gonna help produce a better, more pure signal so that you can get that tone of your guitar plugged directly into your amplifier and by having soldered cables, you don't have any compromise in the connection points. There isn't any opportunity for oxidation to occur. This just makes sure that you can use these cables for the lifetime of your guitar playing until you're 100 years old. All these companies, in fact, almost every single one that I'm aware of that are making these cables that I'm talking about today all offer lifetime warranties, including the ones that we sell on Reverb under the Vertex name. So do check those out. The other thing about using high quality cables is they typically have more shielding, better quality copper, oxygen free. These are all things that when you stack the deck in your favor and you do all these little things by using a little bit higher quality cable, by using a little lower capacitance cable, by using soldered cables, these are all things that are gonna add up in your favor and just equal better tone and less noise. Tip number three is buffers. Now this is something that a lot of people don't like to acknowledge. This is sort of like the foundation of your house. You don't see it, but if it's not right, you're gonna have a heap of problems on your rig. Now I like to use dual buffers in most of my systems, and we actually have a DIY video showing you how to make your own if you really wanna save some dough. But there are a couple of really nice ones that are available straight off of Amazon and Sweetwater and other major retailers. One of my favorite ones out there is the TC Electronic Bonafide Buffer. It comes in right under 80 bucks and is a very great buffer. Although it's a single buffer and if you wanted to truly do the best you could for your system, you'd want one in the beginning of the chain and at the end of the chain. So first pedal that you plug into is the buffer. The last pedal you plug into is the buffer. But some of us have things like boss tuners and things like that. And if you're using that, that does have a one meg input impedance, and that's gonna load your pickups somewhat appropriately or the way that you're used to through most of your amps. And although the output impedance of it isn't great, as long as you have something really high quality at the end that's gonna drive that long line back to your amp, you're probably gonna be okay. Now another alternative, which is also great and a little bit cheaper, right around 55 bucks, is from True Tone, and they have a buffer that is also excellent, but equally is just a single buffer. It doesn't have a dual buffer input and output, so you would again need two of those if you wanted to do it right, but you may already have a device on your board that you're using first that is controlling the pickup loading. The main thing you wanna look for when you're looking for a buffer and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll get this really cheap one that I see on eBay, or maybe I'll get this cheap one I saw on Reverb, if it doesn't meet the specifications of a one meg input impedance and about a 100 ohm output impedance, it's not something you wanna consider. It's not gonna be neutral, it's gonna color the sound, and it's not gonna do the true job of a buffer, which is making sure that even though you're running through 10 plus pedals, that you're gonna get that same sound of the guitar plugged into amp because it's gonna condition that line to kind of erase all of the tone suck. So do check out these buffers. I think they're gonna be great. If you wanna spend a little bit more money, of course you can go with the one that I always like to recommend is one of my favorite production versions, which is by Mesa Boogie, the high wire buffer. But that's getting kind of pricey and I wanna keep these recommendations kind of universally applicable and available to everybody who's watching this. Tip number four. I think having high quality fasteners like Duloc Velcro or Power Grip is an absolute must on a pedal board. I can't tell you how many times I've showed up to a gig or to a jam and I used to open up my pedal board as a college student and I'd see a mess of pedals just littered all over my board. Nothing would stay on there properly until I was introduced to 3M Dual Lock. Now 3M Dual Lock is available pretty much everywhere at this point. Most people know about it, but it is the highest quality fastener. And not only is it about four times more strong than standard industrial Velcro, it also has a really high quality adhesive where if you do need to ever remove it, it doesn't leave a bunch of residue like traditional Velcro would. Additionally, it's not sensitive to heat. So if you're in an area where you're getting seasons, you're getting a lot of hot and cold, the Velcro is not gonna lift up, the adhesive's not gonna come apart. 3M really did their homework on this thing and it is an excellent product. Now there is one other product that's in the same vein as the Dual Lock and it's this 
power grip, powered lock Velcro, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. And it's also readily available on Amazon and a lot of different websites. And I think it's also equally as good as the, the 3M dual lock. It's maybe a little bit less expensive. It doesn't have as many options for the, the density of the Velcro because you can get different size densities of 3M dual lock. But for all intents and purposes, for 99.9% .9 of us, this is gonna be great. And in fact, I just built a rig with it and I'm extremely satisfied with the results. And I feel like it holds up equally to dual lock and is even a little bit cheaper. So if you're looking at that dual lock, you're saying, man, that price tag is a little high for me. You can always check out this power grip. And really you only need four squares, just one in each corner, whether you're using the power grip or whether you're using the dual lock and that's all you're gonna need in order to make sure that your pedals are staying tightly gripped and not gonna come off your pedal board. Just four squares, one in each corner, and you are good to go. And if you wanna know exactly how much Velcro to buy when you're kind of pricing this out, I recommend about a foot a pedal. So that would be about six inches on the pedal and another six inches that would go on the surface that you were mounting to on the pedal board. So that'd be an easy way for you to budget approximately how much you'll need when you're thinking about buying some high quality fasteners like the dual lock and the power grip or the power lock style Velcro. Last tip. Tip number five. Now this isn't so much an upgrade as a generalized recommendation that all players should be doing. This is equivalent to like oil changing your car and just making sure you're doing a high quality maintenance. And that's making sure that you're using a contact cleaner from Deoxit. Deoxit D5 is the absolute cure-all for almost all your pedal ills. This is like the aspirin of pedal boards. You spray it in your input jacks, you spray it in your output jacks, you can spray it in your DC connectors, you can spray it in your guitar, you can spray it in your amplifier. There's almost nothing it won't do. You spray it in your pedal, you work in the jack a few times, that's gonna clean your contacts and make sure that you're having a high quality connection even though you're going through the battlegrounds of the gig, you're getting beer spilled on it, dirt spilled on it, coughing and sneezing, it is going to make sure that your rig is running steady, that it's running strong, and a couple sprays in your input and output jacks, if you're kind of a hobbyist and keeping it in your house, maybe once or twice a year doing that to all your connections. If you're gigging really heavily, then I'd say doing that maybe once every four to six weeks is recommended, and this is just gonna make sure that your pedals stay as clean internally, maybe externally they're a little dirty, and that they're gonna stay as problem free as they possibly can. I highly recommend this product and at the price point that it is, under 10 bucks, certainly worth it. It's just an easy way to have some easy pedal board maintenance. Like I said, it's like the aspirin. Everybody's got some of that in their medicine cabinet. This is something that you need to have in your pedal board toolbox. So those were my five easy tips, tricks, upgrades for beginners, or really even intermediate or any type of guitar player I think could benefit from this sort of thing. Equally bass players don't mean to leave you out there. So do check out all these links for the products we talked about today. I think this is gonna help you keeping your rig running as quietly as possible with the best possible tone, whether that's upgrading your cables for low noise, whether that's upgrading your power supply to a switch mode power supply like the ones that I mentioned that can work anywhere in the world, or whether that's keeping your stuff clean or using high quality fasteners or buffering your board for the best possible tone of the guitar plugged directly into the amp, even though you're using 10 pedals, I think all these things are gonna really help you. So do check out those links, do check out these products, and if you have any other products that you recommend that you think are real pedal board hacks or tricks, products that you think could really improve people's tone, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, the Rig Doctor. See you later.